Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening in and around Missoula on your last best morning show. Wow. Let's get things going. I'm a little bit rusty this morning, but let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. I get some news. I got some, uh, I got dubbing stuff, and I got a whole bunch of new art clips for you guys as we gear up and head towards the middle of June, towards the end of it, and starting with our MCAT summer camps. But first, if you guys are going out and about this week, you might want to avoid that because there's those rain and thunderstorms happening all week. We have a flood advisory until about 15 minutes after the hour this morning. You're going to have some patchy fog. I didn't notice anything. It looked pretty nice this morning. Actually, it was a nice leisurely walk outside. So if you do plan on going out, you might want to try going out today. Um, during the day and but be aware that if you do see some dark clouds coming it might be some of those slight chances of thunderstorms coming in uh, Thursday Thursday Friday it looks like we're gonna have showers likely going from a 40% to about a 70% chances and then hopefully but it looks like by Friday night it's gonna be a low of 51 and a high of 77 with a 30% chances of showers with a partly cloudy night or partly uh, clear sky happening for your Friday night hopefully we'll continue on that throughout the weekend. Um, I have a sheet of paper, and on the sheet of paper reads uh, Missoula Parking um, Commission, which released a press uh, release talking about um, basically they're not going to be uh, helming any um, parking um, in the parking, so it's going to be all digital, so you have to pay through uh, cards, debit cards, credit cards, if you want to park in the main street and the uh, front Street parking garages. Um, they took out the human component, but of course, if you are half, if you have a ticket or you have to pay any kind of over fee for parking there, uh, you can always go to the Main Street where they have their offices for the parking commission. All right. So of course, uh, one of the uh, th I've missed so many different things as I've been gone for the last two weeks. One of the things is uh, the dancing couple, uh, particularly Ronald Kepart. Um, who uh, died at 77, doing what he loved, dancing to the music of Out to Lunch. Um, what started off as a normal afternoon for people out to lunch quickly became a medical issue that took the 77-year-old to the hospital where he died. A man who was just as much of a, as a mystery as you would assume would dance at the Karis Park weekly events and included Missoula F City Band via Gary Gillette, who said a couple nice things about him. But if you don't know who I'm talking about, it's better to kind of see... Uh, rather than talk. So um, usually he was known for wearing his uh, blue shorts and he would dance to a lot of the music. Um, he had some um, uh, heart issues uh, uh, five, six years back, according to the Missoulian and Gary Gillette. Um, and, you know, he, he it never really slowed him down. But, of course, if he ever got tired while he was dancing, he would always sit down and he would just move to the music. Um, but of course, many people had a lot of speculation about wh what his past was. He was like a secret billionaire, all that stuff. But uh, he also uh, wanted his life to remain a little bit of a mystery to keep people intrigued. So that was just a little bit uh, about him. Um, Ronald uh, Kephart. I mean, I didn't even know um, his name until uh, just now. So of course, uh, um, in other news, in 2017, the state conducted a national survey of potential visitors and found that 82% of people um, that travel through the state of Montana are interested in learning about Native Americans. Um, so in an article in Missouri, they wanted to check out how many tribes that reside in, the, uh, in Montana, how they can expand outreach efforts for tourism from all over. The state survey show that a significant percentage of potential travelers are interested in museums, cultural events, and learning about artisans and craftspeople. Lot and, uh, of course, um, um, they also mentioned that uh, the state recently launched a new marketing campaign running animated banner ads in the travel section of the National Geographic website, which get four 24 million visitors a month to highlight the heritage, tradition, and culture of Indian country. So I think the biggest thing in this uh, tourism state in Montana is they want to have a nice little uh, many different stops for people to take between Glacier and Yellowstone National Park. In state news, uh, Helena native Laura Heller is crowned Miss Montana 2018 by Madison Murray, last year's Miss Montana, during the annual Miss Montana pageant held in Glendive. Um, hmm, Glendive. Um, Hella, who's uh, Heller, who's 24, was dancing professionally in the Viking Ocean Cruises, where she met a passenger that happened to be involved with the Miss Montana competition. So, a couple months later, she was crowned uh, Miss Montana, and uh, this year, um, in the uh, Miss America pageant, they took out the swimsuit um, competition. Um, so that's going to be interesting about how things are going to be moving forward with the future of the Miss America pageant as 
well. In national news, I miss everything, and a whole bunch of things happen. And I guess, you know, I'm sure you've probably been hearing about this the whole time. Um, looks like uh, there's some talks, uh, there's uh, opening talks between uh, North Korea and America, uh, which started off as a flame war via Twitter, where Donald Trump was insulting um, Rocket Man, Kim Jong Un, and basically it ended up becoming a dialogue which allowed them to meet up. So basically, it's kind of like where you meet uh, some, someone on Twitter and then you meet up in real life and I guess just kind of hit it off, I guess. I don't know. I mean, this is basically, um, this isn't the only thing because after uh, they met with Trump, they met with the president of China, uh, President Xi Jinping. Sorry, I totally butchered that. But of course, on um, and just the night before, the Pentagon announced that it would cancel any key military exercises with South Korea in August. Of course, that's a big deal since there's a significant, con um, significant concession uh, the North Koreans have wanted for a long time. After all, uh, they s uh, see these exercises as a prep for invasion and have protested against them at every time they occur. The relationship between Washington and Seoul t took a slight hit while Beijing Pyong uh, ties get a little stronger. This uh, may all be in service of a potential deal to curb North Korea's nuclear weapons program, but until that happens, it sure looks like Kim will so solidify his leadership role with North Korea with outside support. So that kind of uh, concludes all your news items that are happening. I got a bunch of new programs for you guys. So if, um, if you're interested in finding out more about MCAT, you can go to MCAT.org. I'll, I'll tell you about more information about what's going on with MCAT after some of these new programs again, that are going to be on MCAT. And these new programs um, via Media Assistant Grants are all themed in music.
Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're interested in any of those programs and more, you can log on to MCAT.org. Go to MCAT.org for all your things MCAT and Missoula Television related. Um, we also are hosting a bunch of summer camps happening this summer. All the summer camps are full except for Time Travelers Camp. There's still a couple more spots left in the Time Travelers Camp, so you can sign up by going to MCAT.org and clicking on the old timey picture. So the whole concept of Time Travelers Camp is that kids get to come together, go to Fort Missoula, enjoy some history, but also create some of their own history and memories as they talk about and create nice little mini docs, uh, whether it uh, has to do with some history stuff, but it's also a good introduction into media, oh, sorry, media arts as well. But of course, to sign up, you go to MCAT.org. If you want to learn more information about my morning show, go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to made you write it out twice, because um, I'm too cheap to buy the Wix uh, um, website or whatever, so don't take wakeupmissoula.com. Anyways, you basically go here. You can see the most current episode, which I'll post on later today. You can go to click on videos, and you can see the past episode, which is pretty far back. But of course, you can see some of the Flakes of Friday. We'll have a new dub and stuff, and you can see past interviews and more. But of course, as you can tell, we are at the face of the camera, and it's time for some city council. And one of the few things that are happening um, in the city council is that they're talking about a couple um, environmental things. And uh, Dr. Watson, who is a retired public in, um, interest environmental science at the University of Montana, talks about an event for environmental sciences during the public comment portion of the city council events. City council. And the university is so glad to get rid of me that it has started a new scholarship for students called the Public Interest Environmental Science Scholarship, or PIES for short, because I'm known for my pie baking. And there will be a fundraiser for that scholarship on this coming Thursday night at the Senior Center at 7 o'clock. There will be music and dancing, and there will be a lot of pies. So I hope you can make it. All right. So starting tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the Missoula Senior Center, you can um, help your environmental uh, studies and also the environmental program through this and Dr. Watson as well and their scholarship. So moving on to the next thing, um, Jesse Ramos, he talks about not voting for one of the consent and, uh, agenda items for about litigation with Boom Carlberg and a couple other concerns that he has as well. So here is Jesse Ramos. Yet, I'm still waiting to hear back from Boom Carlberg answering some of my questions before our meeting. And as a client of the firm, that is um, the client of which is, is shelling out tens of thousands of dollars, I'm a little um, disappointed they haven't gotten back to me yet. And secondly, um, obviously, I, I've already stated my concerns with the city becoming a land baron in this case on item number five. So um, I will be voting no on both those. So item number five in the consent agenda was talking about acquiring some lands from a willing seller who wanted to sell the land um, to the city for use of like open space, park space, trails, and whatnot. Here's Brian Von Losberg uh, responding to uh, Jesse Ramos's uh, comments about this. Uh, and I just think it's important for the public to know that we've had um, ample opportunity on a regular basis going on uh, again and again in public committee, committee meetings um, here uh, on Wednesdays as well as on Monday nights uh, to review those strategic decisions um, and ask any questions associated with that activity and I'll be uh, supporting paying those claims. Um, on the issue of um, item five, the land swap, um, I think it was made abundantly clear in committee that the city has no interest in um, being any kind of a land bearer and, and holding on to that property. Uh, we're interested in uh, making sure that we have a trail connection across an important uh, section of property and then disposing of that property uh, in one of several ways, all of which would benefit the community, where, whether it's an affordable housing project or uh, private development. So, uh, All right, so that was Brian Von Lossberg uh, responding to Jesse Ramos's comments. Um, the, the property uh, being acquired by the city... Uh, um, Okay, so he kind of he kind of mentioned it all, of course. Moving on, a standard uh, zoning overlay action that would change the standards of housing in the university district uh, was up for public hearing um, on the uh, um, June nineteenth, oh n June eighteenth, uh, Monday night meeting. This is the second and final reading of this update to the rezoning. Uh, this overlay would prevent the demolition of two smaller homes for one big one, which means no loss in dwelling for the property lines, maintain existing width and length of the property of the land, and this has been part of the uh, LU land use and 
Land Use and Planning Committee since uh, May 2017 when it came up uh, to uh, certain concerns about a house that was built um, in the Bonner Park neighborhood. So John Snively, um, he, this is his public uh, some public comment about the university compatibility standards overlay. After hearing past discussions on this issue, I feel I must clear up some misunderstandings and assumptions this body and its predecessor has voiced. First, the university district has always advocated that the issue of oversized houses be addressed in all qualified residential areas. It was uh, Councilman Woman Jones decision to limit the scope of this overlay to the university and there has been criticism from members of this council perhaps and, and before that uh, the university is the only area that's been included there are some in this body who believe that the university district is somehow undeserving for redress because of its alleged privileged status and that other in less affluent neighborhoods deserve attention first. I'm confused by this logic because uh, we pay taxes like everybody else, and I think we deserve the same considerations from city council and the administration. All right, so um, those are some of the uh, public comments that are happening um, about this. Um, here's uh, Jerry Ballas, who uh, speaks on this item, and he was, who is not in support of, of the um, overlay zoning um, update. Um, but for completely different reasons. There was a proposal the city was pushing to do boundary line adjustments. That proposal was also affecting neighborhoods very much like this proposal or this building is affecting neighborhoods. At that time, I was able to file a suit against the city with Rick Baskets, and we went through, I don't know, three or four years of fighting, took it all the way to the Supreme Court, I listened to a lot of surveyors and lawyers around town telling me that there was something wrong with the way the city was applying boundary line adjustments, and we won that through the courts. And now there are no boundary line adjustments as being used at that time. All right, so that was uh, Jerry Ballas talking about um, how some of the uh, past things have happened. Of course, most of the update overlay is to have land use and planning get involved with approving of zoning for buildings to be replaced or torn down. A rezoning is a policy that you can ask land use and planning to actually build your home that you wanted to do. So they're not necessarily taking over the idea of you building your perfect little home on the uh, perfect home on these lots it, it, especially there's a lot of old houses in the neighborhood so there's always you, there's always like um a couple things happening this way and that way and of course um it's not sometimes it's not about the size of the building sometimes it's about uh being able to um kind of consider w the options for um construction as well so of course the proposed overlay is to extend an olive branch for other neighborhoods to have a say in size and site masks um but it's, of course, it's not something that's going to affect other neighborhoods right now, but it is something that can prelude to other things happening in the future. Here's Michael Mayer, who is opposed to this ordinance simply because it doesn't address all the concerns of the people in the neighborhoods. I would, I would just point to an old doctrine in English common law. It's called the Sunshine Laws. You weren't allowed to build a house that blocked the sunshine of your neighbor. And a lot of these houses do exactly that. Um, it is, as, as John said, a, a question of neighborliness. And uh, there's an old doctrine in common law called secutere. It's a shorthand version for a long Latin phrase that means use your, your property so as not to impinge on the enjoyment of your neighbors. And I think that's one that we really do need to think about as we look at the construction of these large houses. Thank you. All right. So that was Michael Mayer. Um, he is a university employee. Um, from last that I remember, because I, I took a class with him when I was in college. Um, lots of public, com of course, lots of public comments were going back and forth. There were a lot of people who are in support of this. Um, I mean, the numbers were pretty much um, about 80% in favor 
of having this overlay to help kind of like curve any kind of like major construction because one of the biggest things that happen in the bon in the uh, universe neighborhood is that house um, right next to Bonner Park where it kind of was built up and to m pretty much the edge of the property line. So um, here's Gwen Jones, he who is the university district ward rep, talks about the process that made uh, this overlay possible. When you look at the history of the neighborhood, about 1900, the turn of the century, the residents that were living in the neighborhood at that time came together. And through the tools that they had at that time, they created a beautiful built environment. They decided they wanted to have big setbacks, sidewalks, wide boulevards, trees, and they created that and took the initiative and the result was a beautiful built environment. Their goal was to create a park-like setting. When I look at Missoula, I see many beautiful neighborhoods. I see many great neighborhoods that are walking distance to the downtown, that are historic neighborhoods. I think the University District is a very, very beautiful neighborhood. And I think what sets it apart and I'm not playing favorite children here, but I do think the University District is a very beautiful neighborhood because there was some planning that happened 120 years ago to create a basic structure, and that's why we have this gorgeous neighborhood today. All right. So anyways, um, it's kind of interesting just kind of really think about this because um, I'm assuming you guys are um, at home are probably coming up with your own conclusions about some of this meeting and kind of feeling as though that there's things that should be done and things that shouldn't be done. But a lot of times when you have um, neighborhoods that are almost within I mean, like they're t they're in the city limits, they're part of the wards and stuff like that. But the actual in the uh, the main commercial um, city part very much getting expanding and growing kind of within a lot of these neighborhoods it's kind of hard to kind of avoid sometimes uh kind of like a hybrid um city um involvement with a lot of um building and the look and the aesthetic of the neighborhoods as well of course heather harp uh who is opposed to this doesn't want this to be another policy in other neighborhoods uh because this thinks she thinks that this is would be a a, a prelude to um things that would dictate how we build all houses in the city of Missoula. And I really appreciate all the hard work that's gone into it. Um, however, after a lot of thought, I'm not going to be able to support the motion. Um, there are a number of concerns that I have, um, at least one of which is that this will lead to similar actions by other neighborhoods who feel that there should be a specific character overlay for their neighborhood. And as we try and um, freeze in time, if you will, the character of these neighborhoods, it's going to push the growth that maybe is not um, the most beautiful growth out into other neighborhoods like the ones that I represent. And um, for this reason, I'm not going to be able to support the motion. So with a 6 to 4 uh, voting in favor, this overlay passed in the university neighborhoods. Um, of course, if you want more information, if you, if you want to uh, find out more about what's happening with this, um, the whole kind of concept of is, is that they don't want um, when they when you're building a new home or tearing down a building, they just want to make sure that you're not tearing down a historic building in the university neighborhood that apparently Jeanette Rankin visited. Far be it for me. Um, but they also want to make sure that the houses that you build there don't exceed a certain amount of size to a degree where it encroaches on your neighbor. Anyways, uh, of course, if you want more information, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. Uh, so it's ci.missoula.mt.us, and this is a wonderful website to find out everything what's happening in and around the city of Missoula and your city government. Um, there's a lot of things happening as well with your committee meetings, all starting now. So if you're, uh, if you're tuning into this this morning um, or later this afternoon, you can go to channel 190 and you can see what a lot of the committee meetings are happening. A lot of the committee meetings are a lot of the brass tacks and a lot of the detail work that goes into the shorter meetings that happen on your Monday night. So a lot of times Monday nights on the consent agenda, all the items that were talked about and discussed today on Wednesday meetings will be shortly and put onto a list which will be talked about briefly for Monday's meeting so if you have anything they're going to talk about because they're going to be talking about a couple things with public safety and health which is talking about emergency response, response planning incident command structure and 
communication associated with the recent flooding events. So this is they're going to be talking about an update, um, talking about the flooding and how it's affected, uh, and as mostly how it's affected uh, emergency response. Um, Land Eastern Planning will talk to you about an existing ordinance regarding demolition of historic re uh, resources. Is, uh, resources. So basically, they're talking about like uh, this is a continuation of maybe talking about the Merc and how to avoid kind of like future um, issues in terms of like de de um, demolishing uh, any future historical buildings that want to be preserved with the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, it's a review for economic hardship and is generally broad in nature. Uh, the proposed amendments address the need to for a clear and more refined process for review. So Land Houston Planning will be talking about this uh, today. And of course, they're talking about the budget uh, committee meeting for the fiscal year 2019. Usually over the summer, they talk about all the money that's going to be going on in to uh, 2019 and then they usually end up finalizing it just before 2019 hits. Of course, Public Works continues the approval of water main replacements throughout the city. So you can check out all those and more by going to ci.missoula.mt.us. I think that's pretty much it for me. Um, I have a brand new dub and stuff. And then when I come back, I'll talk about all your events that you guys can do in the city of Missoula right after this. Oh, jeez, I really hate nature. Ugh, everything's so black and white. Ugh, why'd I come here again? Oh! Oh, I'm gonna catch you. I'm gonna catch you. I'm gonna catch you. I'm gonna catch you. Oh, no. This isn't fun anymore. I'm now angry. Stop it. Stop it. I said stop it. Uh, sorry, I was just uh, playing with my umbrella. <laughs> it's kind of funny, I was just thinking about you. Yeah, you know, those flashbacks are kind of getting serious. I'm really concerned about uh, you. No, you don't have to worry about me at all. Um, I've only been off my medication for a couple of days. My prescription gets refilled next week. Boom in the shot. What were you flashbacking to? Uh, I was just flashing back to a simpler time. A time when men were men, women were men, dogs were men, children were men. Children of men. It wasn't about the time you assaulted me, was it? <laughs> no, of course not. I have better memories than that. <laughs> and besides, you aren't the only girl I assaulted at a young, immature age where I thought I had all the power, you know? Well, the times are changing. And change is very important. And to adapt to it. <laughs> and I always thought all you needed was a trusty umbrella. This is kind of eye-opening for me. I never really thought do unto others as others would do unto you. You know, and that kind of crap like that, you know. Uh, do I sound smart? Yeah. Ooh. You know, in some parts of the country, people pronounce an axe an ox because of the whole concept of an aunt versus an aunt. Yep. Well, you know, sometimes when I'm in these situations, I always feel like somebody's watching me. And sometimes when I like to turn and switch cameras, Hey you, what do you think you're doing over there? Well, don't mind me, son. I'm just a, a, a simple hunting man, and I'm just here to like- Oh no, know. I see how it is. I see how what you do. You just sit in the bushes, waiting for a nice young girl to come through here, and be like, hey baby, how's it going? Wanna see my boat? Well, would you like to see my boat? It's a pretty nice boat. I like boats. Do you like boats? It helps with the hunting, and you can put it in the boat, and you can just push it down the river. So, uh, what brings you two down here? You guys are awfully nicely dressed to be out in the middle of the uh, marshlands. So, um, what's the deal? Well, what we're trying to do is have a nice leisurely stroll through the marshlands when you decided to come up and scare us. Well, I'm uh, sorry to do that to you young folks. I never meant to scare anyone. I'm just a humble hunter. See that? It rhymes with hunter. Humble Hunter, and I'll prove that I'm harmless. Just check it. Whoa, 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 I look like quite a fool. <laughs> Please excuse well, me. Well, one thing's for sure is that you don't have to worry about that guy. He seems completely harmless. <laughs> Ooh, wow, flowers. Well, I got plenty of flowers back in my place if you want to go see it. Well, I suppose that doesn't sound shady one bit. Well, geez, you know, the fact that you called it shady in the first place kind of makes it sound like it's shady. Well, you know, I'm just trying to keep you on your toes. <laughs> and it's working. Well, I gotta stay on my toes. I don't want to fall in the marsh and die. <laughs> hey, 
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening throughout the city of Missoula. So, if you guys plan on going out and about, uh, today is um, Out to Lunch. So, Out to Lunch usually uh, consists of uh, things that happen. They have some music, they have some um, food, and it comes from all over and around. And they usually, um, the uh, Missoula Downtown Partnership hosts a lot of these events as well at Karis Park. So, if you want to do that, it all starts at 11 a.m. and it goes until about 2 p.m. So summer camps are starting up and MC and MCAT is still looking for room in our time travelers camp. I just want to har uh, hark on that as well because there's a couple other camps that are happening this week as well. But I just want to kind of advertise MCAT just one more time. MCAT, our summer camps are starting. If you're interested in doing a summer camp, go on to MCAT.org and click on the link time travelers camp and it will bring you to that nice little page where you can submit as well. So and hey, it's fun. Kids age 9 to 13, we're looking for those ages, and it'll be a fun little great time doing nice little Ken Burns type documentaries. Um, that's incredible. Roost Acre Sports Center is doing a camp. Uh, so if you want to do a full day camp, it's from 9 to 3.30 p.m. But of course, if you're interested in doing a half day camp, they have 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And this is for kids age 3 to 12 years old. And it's organized into appropriate age groups. So you don't have like a, a three-year-old hanging out with a 12-year-old and then like a 12-year-old like picks them up and that kind of thing. So they're doing this at Roost Acre Sports Center. And this will be just one of the mini camps that are happening around as well. But of course, Missoula, Pu Missoula Public Library is hosting Tiny Tales at Missoula Food Bank and uh, via Empower Place, and also Frenchtown Branch has started that as well um, over in Frenchtown. Um, Missoula Public Library also hosts um, meals from the Missoula Food Bank at Missoula Public Library. So in a way, they're putting reading at the Missoula Food Bank, and the food bank is putting food at the Missoula Public, Public Library. Nice little um, swap. So from 11.30 to about 1 p.m. in the library, um, usually the conference room, courtesy of the Missoula Food Bank, they offer free lunches to kids under the age of 18 years of age. All right, anyways, Spectrum Discovery opens uh, with science, as always, with chemistry for the little kids and board games later on for their um, uh, maker space. Out to Lunch, of course, kicks off, and they welcome mus musicians and food vendors for a nice out and about at Karis Park. So the Sustainable Community Tours is hosted by Homeward. Discover more about Homeward, uh, the Solstice property, our home ownership um, center programs, and how they create sustainable communities, connect with staff members and volunteers, hear inspirational stories of residents and clients, light lunch provided, and you can RSVP with Aaron at Aaron at homeward.org. You can call them at 532-4663, extension 10. Again, that number is 532-4663 with extension 10. And if you're interested in going to Missoula Senior Center just a little bit earlier before that PI environmental um, um, support event um, today, um, Scrabble and Bridge starts at around 12.30ish, and you can play and you can have some lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. River Road Neighborhood Leadership Team Meeting starts tonight at 6.30 p.m. There's a whole bunch of other things that are happening in the afternoon, but we're going to skip right on over through that to the Garden City Harvest. Um, so if you, li if you live off River Road and want to talk about the construction of the new Russell Street Bridge, um, it's... Um, it's really nice to actually say that because they've been wanting to do the Russell Street Bridge forever. They closed River Road, and so they're having a uh, at Garden City, Har Garden City Harvest at 6:30 p.m. tonight. Um, you want to? They're having a River Road Neighborhood Leadership Team meeting, so you can learn more about that and also comment about some of the ways that you can get around the area because they're closing it off the Russell Street entrance to River Road. So 3D printing and 101 workshop is at the Missoula Public Library starting at 6.30 p.m. tonight. You can come learn about how to use Missoula Public Library's 3D printers, plural, there's more than one, during this workshop. Topics covered include how to set up prints, where to find 3D printed objects online to print and resource available for 3D modeling and 3D scanning. Space is limited to six participants per workshop and online registration is required and you can register online at missoulapubliclibrary.org. Uh, City Band is also happening tonight. Gary Gillette hosts the Missoula City Band at Bonner Park every Wednesday until mid-August, which is, I believe it's August um, so 15th. August 15th will be the last um, uh, um, Missoula City Band that happens in Bonner Park. And, you g and when, while you're there, you're going to see the giant house that everyone's been talking about. <laughs> for like over a year now it, it, people are just it's like one of those topics would be like don't get me going 
And so <laughs> that's pretty much it for your Wednesday events. Here's some of your late night stuff. Uh, Brains on Broadway, uh, Broadway Bar and Grill hosts a trivia night starting at 7.30. Uh, Silver Slipper also has a trivia night at 7.30 on the outskirts near the old Walmart off of uh, 93 Brook Street. Missoula City Band, um, once again, okay. Um, NICO and medic Medicine for the People is going to be uh, music uh, happening at the Wilma. Trivial Beer Suit is going to be at the Press Box. Rocking Karaoke at the Dark Horse. And Craptastic Karaoke at the Badlander. All starting tonight on your Wednesday. Um, I have an art clip for you guys. So without further ado, here is an, uh, a brand new art clip from our very own Rick Phillips. Um, and when we come back, we'll talk about your Thursday events, which include Downtown Tonight. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some Thursday events that are happening in the city of Missoula. Kicking off your Thursday morning, Tiny Tales at Missoula Public Library, um, at Missoula Public Library, starting at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, and it's a good way for kids to learn nine new words a day, courtesy of the Missoula Public Library. We're finding research methods for government contracting. University of Montana hosts a... Uh, uh, how to get money and uh, uh, contracting opportunities through federal local and state governments, understanding how government purchases uh, products and services, learn how to market research techniques, develop a market strategy. So um, one of the bigger things um, in terms of um, getting your product or being a good entrepreneur, well, being an entrepreneur in general, is that sometimes you have the consumer, but then a lot of times if, you, if your uh, product is something that you can sell to uh, government federal city state owned property you have uh, the opportunity to make a good lump of sum of money and this whole thing at the university of montana will teach you guys about refining research methods for government contracting um, getting to know your library catalog at missoula public library host a class uh, for instruction for efficiency searching for materials using the library catalog and explains how to manage your checkouts using the account manager registration is required by calling 721 book otherwise known as 721 Two six six five, and this happens from 12 to 1 p.m. in the community classroom. So you basically can learn to know how to cata um, catalog all your libraries in your community classroom all within one hour. Um, planetarium show, um, 1 p.m. and 2.15 p.m. So if you are interested in, in going to the planetarium at the University of Montana and you have their first summer show of the series, Mark Reiser will present the Aurora Borealis Peeling Back the Curtain starting at 1 and 1 p.m. and if you miss the 1 p.m. show, they have a 2:15 p.m. show at the Planetarium at the University of Montana. Um, you can check it out. Um, bugs and fly fishing, Missoula Insectarium, MissoulaButterflyHouse.org. Uh, during this weekly activity, they will be giving out top secret information that will help you catch the biggest trout of your life. It's easy to ob as observing what a f what is fluttering on outside. So come join them for a day of learn how anthropods and fly fishing gets along so well and um, they'll uh, they also have a simply fly, uh, fly tying inspired activity for the little anglers as well so if you have a kid who you want to get them fly fishing with you going on there Missoula Insectarium will have these classes to help and kind of show because they know about bugs and fly fishing is all about um, making your reel look like a bug 
uh, downtown tonight is happening at Karis Park. Um, they, it happens every Thursday night in June from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. in Karis Park in the downtown Missoula area. This event offers an outdoor venue for live music, Missoula's best food vendors, and the beer selections, the beer gardens um, for residents and visitors. This event also highlights the weekly family activities, and as always, it's free to attend. Uh, the only thing you got to pay for is food, beer, all that. Uh, of course, no pets allowed under the pavilion during an event due to health code regulations. Dogs can enjoy the grassy area of the park on a leash. Um, they just ask for that to happen just for liability's sake. Um, Humphrey Fellowship Community Dialogue Series is at the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center. Join UM's English Language Institute and the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center for the third installment of Humphrey Fellows Community Dialogues. This week, uh, fellows will discover their home countries, Iran, Mongolia, and Cuba, uh, Cuba, and their work in the natural resource management and agriculture, followed by a community discussion. Um, animals and fireworks, not a winning combination. Um, tis the season for fireworks, fun, and festivities. But did you know July 5th has been reported as the biggest day for animal shelters? Well, because animals are scared by loud noises, and loud noises are caused by fireworks. And um, animals can't um, fathom why their safe environment in quiet neighborhoods or pastures has overnight turned into a terrifying war zone with no hiding places and no way to escape the sounds smells and uh, vibrations the animals sense things ever so much more intensely than we do can you imagine feeling like that horrifying isn't it so basically they're being doing a um fireworks uh, this is an online thing as well but this is just a thing that's happening tonight i mean thursday night at 7 p.m so if you want to learn more about that, you can go to their website. Um, let me just try to find it. Um, doo -doo -doo. Hold on, I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. Just you know, just just bear with me. There's a whole bunch of stuff on here as well. Um, so yeah, here's the website. It is janetrupper.com. And this is one of the workshops about animals and fireworks, not a winning combination. Anyways, let's talk about uh, some other things that are happening for your Thursday night. If you guys are planning on going out and about, City Council Chamber is hosting the Heart of Missoula Neighborhood Leadership Meeting starting at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Rebecca Flott's Arts Screen Art Dreamy Picket Fence is going to be the, at Painting with a Twist. Um, and also against all odds. These are all classes with painting with a twist. Um, Missoula Folklore Society Contra Dance will be at the Missoula Senior Center, which will also be hosted for the uh, PIES Scholarship, which is the uh, Environmental um, Education um, Scholarship for people going to the University of Montana. Open Mic, Green Alternative Dispensary um, is going to be doing some rock folk open music. Narcotics Anonym Anonymous meeting is happening at the University of Montana um, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Rocking Karaoke at the Dark Horse is going to round up your uh, uh, events for the next two days, and I'll have your Friday events and more later on this week as well. So that pretty much does it for Wake Up Missoula. If you want to learn more information about my morning show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. It's so nice to read it out twice. You can go to mcat.org for all your summer camp needs. And if you want MCAT to film an event that's coming up here in the city of Missoula, you go to how do I request event recording. And, um, you know, if you if you are looking this at your home screen, it's a little small. Just basically go to MCAT.org. It's as simple as go to how do I request event recording. Or if you already have a program you want to run on MCAT, you can submit a program, which is right underneath re request event recording. So those are all wonderful things that you guys can do to get involved with Missoula Community Access Television. Um, Missoula's Community Media Resource, um, you can go... Um, Orientation is tonight at starting at 5.30 p.m. If you are a person interested in learning about uh, getting uh, your first step into television um, medium, you can join us every Wednesday starting at 5.30 p.m. for a quick little orientation. Um, MCAT provides free equipment checkout for people who want to um, film, edit, and make their own short films, um, videos, music videos, whatever your imagination, we can help you provide that as well. So uh, thanks for joining me. I um, hope you have a wonderful day. It is out to lunch today and more happening this weekend as well as we kick into our summer camp starting next Monday, June 25th. So without further ado, thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. <laughs>